from empowering emerging companies to levelling the venture capital playing field. Tundo and Margaret Matunda help founders build healthier ventures and find the right funding. Their intelligent platform and proprietary venture health assessment tool brings a holistic and objective lens to allow funders to easily source, screen and scale diverse ventures. This dynamic mother-daughter duo is using technology to remove barriers to capital and drive equity in investment. So, are they game changers? Let's find out. I'm Tracy Spicer. Welcome to Game Changers. We know that less than 5% of investment goes to female founders. Your platform, Musa, aims to change that, which I think is phenomenal. Tando, take us through how it works. So Musa is the first intelligent venture assessment platform. And what we've done is really use advances in technology to allow a central place where founders can go in, look at the benchmarks, look at the industry standards and compare their businesses to you know, these 12 pillars and determine where are the gaps in their businesses that make them not attractive to investors. We then work with investors to help them source, screen and scale diverse ventures. The aim is really to be able to make getting funding accessible for all founders, you know, irrespective of their background. It's an inspired idea. Margaret, you've worked with entrepreneurs, particularly female entrepreneurs, for 40 years. What are some of the fundamental problems faced by startups? Most startups don't understand how, what investors need. Sometimes they don't understand what the bank needs. So when we worked with uh, entrepreneurs, and mostly uh, it could be in Australia, uh, Asia Pacific, I've also done it in the States, uh, we then develop the entrepreneur or the venture and they are ready to go funding. And we find that the bank says no. So in this case, we, whilst they know how to run their business, they don't know how to put this into the words or into the language that the investors understand. So Musa, we, with Musa, we tried to make sure this language is understood by investors. So we put it into very standardized uh, 12 pillars of business, which actually touch on operations, human resources, supply chain, managerial capabilities. And uh, this more pan out the three dimensions of uh, what investors want. It really is an absolutely brilliant idea. How exactly does the health assessment tool work? Uh, we ask founders to fill in a questionnaire or a measurement a inst instrument which we've developed based on a lot of research from different countries which indicates what investors are looking for. So it actually in, uh, assesses how a venture is doing uh, on different dimensions. And most of these dimensions have to do with desirability. Uh, is, does, is there somebody out there who loves the product, who wants the product? Is it actually viable? Is the idea going to be sold or accepted? How big the market is? And just also to do with, can you actually, you as a venture, can you deliver? Do you have the capabilities? Or do you have the money? If you don't have the money, is there somebody who can give you money? In this case, that's where we go to investors so that you can deliver. And then can you actually defend? And this has to do with IP, intellectual property, and your ability to have a competitive edge within your market. So you're looking at all pieces of the puzzle. Aren't you? Uh, yes. Tanda, you're particularly interested in underrepresented founders. Who are they and why is this an area of passion for you? So I love the term underrepresented founders because, you know, it's actually the other 95 or, you know, 90% of the world's population. Um, they're merely just people who are underrepresented in terms of, you know, the allocation of funding in which 90% you know, of venture funding goes to white males predominantly, and which leaves you know, people of color and women in you know, the tiny, tiny minority of the funding that they get. Yet you see them over index in terms of new businesses being started. So you know, when we say underrepresented, we're actually talking about everybody else. We're talking about these incredibly, incredible diverse founders who have unique ideas and are solving, often solving problems that they have seen within their own ecosystems um, in a way that, you know, somebody who from Silicon Valley or MIT wouldn't be trying to solve that problem if they were trying to solve it at all. So there's a flow on effect yes. socially and globally. Yeah, the statistics are shocking. Yeah. I mean, 3% of venture capitalists globally are women. And when it comes to black women, it's well under 1%. 
Professor, when did you both decide as mother and daughter to, to work together on this? I've worked uh, in women in development. Uh, I've worked in developing uh, uh, small businesses for a long time. Uh, I've run actually uh, in apprenticeship development out of Cape Town for the past uh, 25 years. Tando has complementary skills in that she actually uh, does venture, uh, venture capital and uh, investments. So when I do, when we do run organizations or we talk to founders, we find that most of them can't raise money or can't scale. And uh, so the complementary capabilities were there where Tando knows how to raise money. And uh, so this was actually a, a perfect uh, match for, for the two of us to work together. Tando, what's it like working with your mom? It's honestly, it is an incredible privilege to get to work with someone who has had such an an impact and within the entrepreneurship development space. I spent my life watching her changing the lives of, you know, um, entrepreneurs in agritech like throughout Southern Africa. And then when I was you know, pulling together this, being like, this has to be a platform, Musa has to, you know, for it to be scalable and to, you know, change hundreds of thousands of founders' lives, it has to be a platform. And realizing that the person I wanted to do this with was sitting across from me on the kitchen table. Oh, and what a tremendous role model as well. I mean, <laughs> Professor, you lived through apartheid. You've helped so many entrepreneurs, particularly women in sub-Saharan Africa, and yet you say that this venture with your daughter will have more impact than even all of that. How does that make you feel? A lot of gratitude for getting the chance to, to do it because uh, all this time when we worked on it, we would actually work with four, five, ten ventures. But this will uh, help us probably to scale and being able probably to work together in scaling and touching so many lives is, uh, is so inspirational to me. Uh, actually, sometimes I feel like, like crying. Is it possible for me to be able to talk to 400 ventures in a week? Tando, what do the next 10 years look like? What are your dreams? So we have you know, set the audacious goal of funding 10,000. On one side, we have you know, the network of uh, you know, VCs and, and you know, lenders um, or funders that are looking for those opportunities. On the other side, we've created that you know, through, this, through this assessment and coaching process, the ability to reach a million ventures through channel partners, ability to have you know, 100,000 ventures create these ventures, you know, do the venture assessments and create these dashboards so that we're then able to match ventures with the investors. So, you know, 10 years from now, you know, we want to be the go-to place for, you know, diverse founders looking to build healthy, robust businesses on one side. And then, you know, the, the standard of what objective, intelligent screening of opportunities looks like for venture capital and private equity um, or private market more broadly. Margaret, what message would you like to send to someone who's watching, who might be a founder, who might be thinking of having a startup, who's from an underrepresented community? It's possible for a founder, if you can get the right guidance or the right mentoring, or if you can get the right tools uh, to be able to scale your venture and to be able to get funding. Uh, because there are so many people with uh, such beautiful ideas, but then they don't know the best way to go about getting funding or to even structure a business or even to put this idea to an investor. So we are saying the Musa platform can help uh, anybody who is in that state and we can work with them on a stage by stage because as we identify these 12 pillars of business in the four dimensions of uh, the Musa platform, we are able to pinpoint exactly where the issue is and we can f work on that specific issue. With the, we don't work just with Musa, but we have an ecosystem of advisors. So if it's a supply chain problem, you go to our supply chain ecosystem advisor. If it's an operations problem or if it's a uh, financial issue, then you have to go to the advisor or company, which is a specialist in that. Until you are good enough, uh, the venture assessment uh, tool is saying now you are good enough to be matched to an investor. So it's possible to, to get there. So what does success look like to you? So our ethos is driving equity and in investments. And our North Star is, you know, we're going to fund 10,000 diverse founders. Um, you know, we're going to collect a array of investors and funders who are committed to, you know, diversity, equity, and inclusion 
in their own processes. And then you now we're going to deploy capital to incredible diverse founders around the world. Um, it means we have to build 100,000 dashboards, um, but you know, we, can, we can certainly get there. And yeah, so it's, yeah, that's, that's success for us. This is creating global, transformative, structural change. You are both game changers. Thank you for joining us today. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Tracy.